Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar from v the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it's remaining fairly warm uh, over the next two or three days and pretty much by the time we get to Tuesday the 1st of November it is going to be turning much cooler. Temperatures will be back down towards average for this time of year, sort of mid to low teens if not even high single digits for some, uh, feeling much cooler than it has recently where we could still see 20 degrees uh, at times this weekend it does look likely in the longer term we will be trending as i said towards average if not below average through the first week or two of november blocking is potentially appearing to our north not giving us anything substantially cold but showing some interesting signs for early winter period which we do think could have an above average chance of colder weather in general whether that's prolonged cold weather or cold snaps as we've alluded to in the winter look aheads so that's very interesting we'll be looking at that in the second half of the video but for the time being it's remaining warm 20 degrees as possible and still rain around in the south and the west so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description so to start on the live radar you can see at the moment as i'm recording this around 5 p.m many areas are very warm and dry southerly wind pushing in few showers across northern ireland probably of ireland and scotland where we've got some precipitation moving in a bit of instability bumping into that warmer air and it's producing some heavy maybe even some thundery showers there we did see some very heavy rain that's now approaching norway and denmark spread in overnight but not impacting many areas perhaps earlier this morning it did though but it's been generally quite a dry and warm day and if you look at those temperatures if we get this a load, you can see, look at that, all these yellows and, uh, yellows and oranges. And this is at 5 p.m. Temperatures still in those mid to high teens. Very mild, very warm for this time of year. You'd expect this time of year to be seeing some lighter blues, especially in Scotland, showing temperatures dropping towards freezing over the higher ground. But even over the highest ground here, temperatures are sort of mid to high single digits. So very, very mild for uh, this time of year. But as I said, it will be turning much cooler. You can see the whole of northwest Europe is really quite warm and mild. But just peaked one off, look at Greenland, Canada, Iceland, even parts of Scandinavia, and all the way across Eastern Europe into Russia, the cold air is building. So it is likely over the next couple of weeks, we will be turning substantially colder, but probably only to around average. Uh, but it's going to be feel substantially more uh, colder than that because we are dropping from sort of five to ten degrees above average as we are at the moment now if we go to the ukv and see what the precipitation and the temperature is doing over the next five days you can see earlier this morning that very heavy rain pushing through but it did clear around lunchtime for most areas and today it's been generally a dry and warm day as i said showers will push in and you can see overnight tonight some more heavy rain pushing into the south and the west and dissipating as it moves northwards um, and by tomorrow afternoon still plenty of rain in the west and northern areas as well but eastern areas still quite dry and could be quite warm there once again as we head into sunday again you can see the rain does clear and as we head into sunday afternoon you can see those temp uh, those precipitation bands do move in more from the west could give some heavy rain and maybe some thundery showers at times for clearing through and again it's in this sort of pattern of sunshine and showers there will be warm dry bits but there will also be some showery cooler bits as well around uh, and again it's just dodging those showers we'll decide what temperatures you get for halloween it, it does look likely um, that we will see conditions become more cloudy you can see a band of precipitation moving in and that's a cold front because you can see the line convection typical of a cold front um, and we likely see much cold weather digging in behind it much cooler air masses uh, and that's sort of the, the step change we're seeing on halloween and you can see some very heavy rain along that so maybe some heavy rain ahead of it in the south and the east and eventually when that clears through we'll be into a very unsettled westerly phase we're still quite unsettled at the moment but it's more widespread unsettled conditions because the wind is veering more from the west to east than a south to north with the south to north it's meant many east areas have actually remained fairly dry over the last few days has seen their fair bout of precipitation especially last week with some big thunderstorms around but it has avoided eastern areas quite a lot but with more of a west to east it will push in uh, precipitation to most areas and you can see the step change by a look at the upper air temperatures you can look at that oh, for the, th the 2nd of november wednesday look at the upper air temperatures widely around freezing if not below freezing but you look at the upper air temperatures right now or earlier today uh, this morning look at 12 13 degrees at angel fit hpa so a good 10 degree temperature drop we're likely to see those sort of temperature drops at the surface as well going from high teens low 20s to perhaps low teens and maybe even high single digits in some areas.
If you look at those max temperatures over the next five days, you can see this afternoon temperatures widely, those mid to high teens may be touching 18, 19 or 20 degrees in a few areas, cooler further north and westwards, which is expected with more cloud and precipitation around. As we veer into Saturday, you can see those temperatures once again will rise in the south, 20, 21 degrees, or maybe even 22 degrees. That's average summer high. Our average high temperature for as many areas is 21 degrees. Uh, London, it's around 22, 23 in the peak of summer, but widely elsewhere, it's around 20, 21 degrees in the summer months. So we are seeing summer conditions for many areas um, again it's only a day or two um, and again it will only it will quickly peak in the afternoon and dissipate as soon as the sun starts to set but it is really quite warm exceptionally warm and it's the persistency of this we have seen hotter temperatures our daytime records for end of october is around 23 24 degrees so we have seen odd warmer days this is persistent above average temperatures it'll be very interesting to see what the cet comes out um, by the end of this month so the mean uh with the central central england temperature the mean central England temperature which shows sort of our average conditions um, and it allows us to compare months so very interesting seeing that in a few days time now as we head towards Sunday the 30th of October it will start to cool down uh, still maybe mid to high teens in the south some showers pushing in perhaps so keeping those temperatures down in a few areas and as we head towards Halloween um, it will remain still fairly mild mid-teens maybe high teens in a few spots but you can see that cold front spreading in many areas in the east uh, so the west down to mid single digits overnight and you can see by the first of November not drastically colder but look at that peaking 15 or 16 degrees and the west around 9 10 11 degrees so we're seeing that temperature drop and uh, that step change on the first of November so yeah cooler conditions coming in uh, by tuesday time and it will feel a lot cooler even though the thermometer temperatures may still hang on a bit of residual warmth the, uh, the feel like temperatures will be dropping substantially uh, and you will be wanting a coat out there maybe hat and gloves if you are out early in the morning and it's only going to get cooler as we head through november uh, as we lose more daylight and the air masses to our north and our west uh, and pretty much all around are slowly getting colder peaking toward their coldest extent in january february time so if you do now go over to the gfs and see what that is showing over the next couple of weeks now you can see the southerly wind at the moment uh, and you can see it veers more westerly come early next week and that's why we're going to be going cooler uh, again it's not a mile it's not a particularly cold direction but it's a lot cooler than a southerly wind this time of year we continue with this sort of westerly flow all the way in the longer term and then we see a bit of blocking you see that blocking towards greenland the arctic may provide some application in the jet stream a br brief northerly there by uh sort of 8th 9th of november again nothing substantial because we haven't got that much cold air available for the first week of november but if we did see this sort of pattern continue in a few weeks time there is the potential for much colder weather as those air masses to our north are starting to strengthen a lot uh, or very quickly we do continue to see amplification but we do remain f in a fairly west westerly flow but it's not sort of this uh, big area of blues and, and purples um, there which we'd expect with a very strong westerly flow. Yes, it's westerly, there's amplification, there's high pressure blocking, and that sort of signal we were seeing on the winter look ahead. So it's still there, as we saw in yesterday's video as well. So yes, nothing substantial at this stage, but the signs are there for cooler weather through the middle to end of November with this sort of blocking pattern. That southerly wind we were seeing, the jet stream pushing to our north with the west to southwesterly does not look particularly likely. As we see the ensembles at the end of the video, it's generally average to potentially below average conditions. Um, and again, you can look at the upper air temperatures. It won't be cold the whole time. There will be milder sectors moving through, but it will generally be average to below average, as I said, with that wind originating or the wind bringing air that is originating from sort of Canada and Greenland. So it does get moderated, moderated significantly across the North Atlantic where sea surface temperature and, uh, temperatures are sort of mid to high teens. Uh, so it does get moderated uh, quite significantly, uh, gets warmed up quite a lot, but it is still going to be cooler than average. 
If we do look at the GM, see how that does compare over the next 10 days. Again, a southerly flow at the moment, veering more westerly as we head towards next week. And you can see there is blocking to our north, a bit of higher pressure, bringing some application to the jet stream because you can see these purple blobs and blue blobs are not all together when we see a very powerful polar vortex in the troposphere and a big westerly flow uh, where we wouldn't be able to break the momentum with any application in the jet stream. You'd expect all these purples and blues to all be connected, but they're not. They're sort of spread apart, which shows that higher pressure is mixing in, giving some application in here. Yes, we're seeing a southwesterly. It would be quite stormy. But there is a lot of cold air there pushing into the North Atlantic, which would be fueling these lows, giving us potentially very unsettled conditions, but also cooling the air masses down in general. So again, nothing substantial at day 10, but just signs of cooler weather, more unsettled weather, and maybe the signs of potentially colder weather towards the second half of the month if we did see this application and blocking signal continue, which, as I said, not only are we starting to see hints of in these mid-range to longer range models like the GFS and this GEM run, but we are also uh, we've been seeing for quite a, time, a long time on the winter look aheads in both sort of week ahead uh, or monthly models and very long term models like the CFS um, and uh, typical sort of uh, ENSO things as well, or the ENSO region, sorry, as well, which uh, with the La Nina also just suggest potentially blocking and colder starts to winter. So yeah, very interesting. And I keep saying in these videos, we will get to a point where we do start to see some very interesting model runs. Uh, and I do suspect that will be within the next few weeks. Uh, I do suspect we will have a good chance of seeing some cold weather towards the end of November, whether it's just uh, optimistic models um, or whether we do actually see it come off. We'll have to find out, but I definitely do think there is an above average chance of cold snaps and generally cold weather towards the end of November and December for this winter. If we do go over to the ECMWF and see what happens over the next 10 days from this run, again, a southerly wind at the moment, veering more of a westerly, and you can see again, high pressure to our north, those blues and purples are more connected at day 10, so more of a flat westerly here, not a lot of momentum breaking there, but there is higher pressure towards Svalbard and northern parts of Scandinavia, so a bit of a Siberian high potentially building there, but again, nothing too substantial. A bit more together, the polar vortex here in the troposphere towards Greenland, northern Canada, but again, uh, still very similar, sort of a westerly flow, perhaps slightly more mild than the other runs were showing. You can see there are more milder sectors here as the jet stream has shifted slightly further northwards because there's less higher pressure towards northern Canada and Greenland that is trying to push the colder air out of the Arctic. So ECMWF a bit milder there, uh, especially at day 10, but still showing the general westerly flow, just less amplification and less blocking. But it is still very early days and we'll have to see what happens over the next few weeks. Now, after you finish the video, we'll have a look at the ensembles. You can see we are well above average, potentially 10 degrees above average over the next few days. But you can see by the 1st of November, big step change to average to below average all the way to around the 9th of November. Now, beyond that, so in the 10 to 14 day time frame, the ensemble members here do go slightly above average, but there is a lot of scatter, so I wouldn't look too much into that. We should concentrate really on the next sort of 10 days towards the 7th, 8th of November where we do have quite a lot of consistency of well above average at the moment, the next sort of two or three days, and then dropping well below average come the start of November, and an increased amount of precipitation, as I said, because we have more of a west to easterly wind, uh, which gives rainfall for all areas. It sort of dilutes that rainfall more around um, than what we've seen at the moment, where sort of western areas and southern areas have seen a lot of rain at times. Luckily, we have been very dry over the summer. We had a lot of those drought warnings over the summer, so it does mean sort of reservoirs and river levels aren't getting too overwhelmed yet because yes a lot of rain has fallen um, especially in some areas over a short period of time but because levels were below average it means it's just sort of topping up getting it towards where it should be this time of year again something to keep an eye on is the two meter temperatures a massive step change you can see 20 degrees is possible tomorrow and then you can see this time next week more around 13, 14 degrees, so around a 5 to maybe even 10 degree temperature drop in some areas. And you can see that there's no chance for getting much above 15 degrees uh, for the foreseeable future and probably uh, until some next March time. Uh, of course, we could get anomalous southerly winds like we did see last year. Around the New Year period, where we saw sort of 17, 18 degrees, uh, or sort of mid tie teens, really. Uh, but most likely, we will not see temperatures get much above 15 degrees for three or four months now. So, yeah, do cherish the next couple of days where it is still warm, because when we see the step change come, uh, sort of Tuesday time, it's going to be 
that sort of conditions for the foreseeable future, if not getting colder in the longer term. And if we do compare it to the Eastern WF, see if this is uh, updated today. Look at the midnight run. Yeah, again, unfortunately, it's not updated. Uh, you get the midnight run from yesterday. Uh, again, it, this one has updated, but it uh, only goes out to 10 days, unfortunately. I don't know what the issue is, but it still is showing the same sort of pattern. Well above average at the moment, trending towards average, if not slightly below average in the longer term, and increased precipitation. Very unsettled, really, in general, uh, but turning cooler. So, yeah, interesting conditions coming over the next couple of weeks, generally turning from very warm uh, warmer and unsettled to more cool and unsettled, more typical for this time of year, and signs in the longer term of potentially some blocking, which would go with what we've been seeing in the winter look heads for November into December. We'll just have to see anything does come of that over the next few weeks. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.